Hi everybody, happy new year. Kevin from mechanicaladvantage.com. We're gonna continue looking at our series on creating a setup using Fusion 360. Uh, in the first part, we looked at placing a work coordinate system on different uh, situations with parts. And in this video series, uh, the first one we're gonna look at placing our stock, setting up our stock using the fixed options. So I have three examples of parts uh, that we're going to look at. We're going to do a fixed size box, a fixed size cylinder, and a fixed size tube. So here's a part that I would like to machine. I'm going to right click on my setup and say edit. I already filled out this first part just to save a little time. So I placed my work coordinate system um, on the stock body that's on there. Now what we're going to do is move to the stock tab and we're going to work with a fixed size box. I happen to know that the dimensions of this part are 4 by 1.75 by 1.5, so I've already pre-entered those in. Um, if we look at it from a top view, you can see the stock is wrapped tight to the uh, machined part. If we look at it from the front view again, you can see we have a little bit of uh, stock on the top and the bottom. So actually the height of this part is 1.25, not 1.5. So what we want to do... I'm going to do this, when I machine this part, my intention is to do what is called a carrier part. So I'm going to machine all the features on the part. I'm going to machine the entire periphery of the part. And I'm going to go past the bottom depth of the part a little bit. So what I'd like to do on this part is leave just a little material on above the top face of this part that we can use a face cutter to, uh, to skim off. And then I need some material on the bottom that I can hold on to. So what I'd probably like to do is have like an eighth of an inch of material on each side to clean up. So I'm going to enter 4.125 for my X. I'm going to enter 1.875 for my Y. And I'm going to leave this Z depth at 1.5. So now if we were to go around and look, we'll see that we have a little bit of material all the way around the part. And if we look at it from our front view, we have material on the top and on the bottom. That's good, but what it's done is it's split, it's taken that quarter inch of extra material that I had and it's added an eighth inch to the top and an eighth inch to the bottom. Now what I'd like to do is I'd like to just have a little bit of material on the top and have the majority of the material on the bottom so that we can hold it in the vise. So that is where this model position options are going to come in. Now we could offset it in the X or in the Y directions. In this case, we'd like it to be centered. So on the Z, instead of centering it, we're going to offset it from plus Z. When I click on that, um, it remembered the uh, previous value that I've used of 20 thousandths of an inch. So you can see that there's 20 thousandths of an inch of material above the part. And then the rest of that quarter of an inch is, is below the part. So that gives us something that we can uh, make a nice skim cut across the top and get everything nice and flat. And we still have plenty of material on the bottom to hold on to so that we can machine all the way around our part. So that would be what how you use the fixed size box, box options to uh, create a setup. So I'll go ahead and click OK. And now let's move over to the cylindrical setup. So again, I went ahead and just got things kind of ready. Uh, I placed my work coordinate system and then I just left the default uh, values for a fixed size cylinder. So here's your choices that you can go through and make. So you have fixed size box, fixed size cylinder, fixed size tube. Um, we're going to cover all these different options. Okay, so now uh, I know that the, the v diameter of this cylinder is 3.25 so 3.75 is probably a pretty good value we could we could maybe go 3.625 whatever you want to do there and again uh, if we look at it from the front view we have a little bit of material left on top so I left that same 20 thousandths of, of an inch skim and um, I know that this is two inches in height so we have the length of 2.25 this part is now ready to go ready to to be machined. And if we go and look at our fixed size tube, it's going to be much the same. So I'm going to right click and edit. You can see again, I've placed the work coordinate system where it needs to go on this part. 
Um, a lot of times in Fusion, when you see this banding effect, that means that the stock, that two surfaces are uh, collinear on each other. So the stock surface and the part surface are the exact same and we kind of get this banding effect. So when you see that, just be aware of what that is. So we'll go to the stock. Now you can see we can specify a stock diameter. I'm gonna choose fixed size tube. We can specify a stock diameter, a stock inner diameter, a length, and then um, where we want that to be positioned. So let's say that, again, we want this to be 3.75. So we'll give a little extra material around the outside. Um, the inner diameter of this is 1.75. So uh, that might be a little too aggressive. So 1.625. So that will give us a little bit of material that we can clean up on the inside. And again, if we look at it from the front view, uh, it's wrapped tightly. So we would maybe want to say 2.25 again for the total height, 2.25. And we would like to offset that from the front and we'll offset that again by that same 20 thousandths of an inch. So now we have something to hold on to. We can skim off the top. We can machine the entire inside and outside of the part um, before we flip it over and clean up that backside. Uh, another thing to note is that with each of these options, it always tells Fusion tells you what the total size of your stock is going to be. So 3.75 by uh, 3.75 by 